we've got one in New Zealand, ready-made, why don't we use it? So it was, it was a good, good reason for doing it. It's also cutting-edge technology. If you go on the web now and dump in, just, just that polymer there, polyaniline, there are, polypyrrole, sorry, there are, I don't know, maybe 100 websites, research websites, showing what they're trying to do with these things, with the peristaltic pumps, artificial muscles, robotic arms, all sorts. And it's something that kids can actually go and say, wow, look at that, that's what's going on out in the world. They can see the relevance of it, it's coming, it's a coming technology. And also, fantastic things, polymers of plastics, as most of them call it, that conduct electricity. They're not told that, they're something new. So it's a, it's, a, it's a new concept. Making the polymers dirty, dead easy. I mean, you just basically put the pyrrole in, in some water, and you, we have a little electrical box made up by the, the electrical technician department. Apply a current to it, you make polypyrrole. There's this doping thing, which I'll talk about in a minute. There's the high tech cell we make it with 100 mil, 100 mil beaker, polycarbonate lid, three electrodes. This black thing in the middle is the polypyrrole growing, and it looks like this. We have two, two negative electrodes. If you, put, if you just have a single positive and negative electrode, you get a film on both sides of the positive and electrode anyway. One side's really thick, the other side's really thin. By putting two electrodes in, you get an even film on both sides. And Bearing in mind we're dealing with first year students here, this gives us a chance that they stuff up taking the film off, we've got another film to come out, so it's not completely stuffed up. Um, so that, that's, that's, and it's nice and it's easy and it's simple. That's, that's, that was the key thing, we didn't want anything that was really complicated, really hard to do. We put in three different dopants. The dopants are the things that make, it conduct, that make it conduct. We gave them a range of dopants and we gave them a choice of what concentrations. We suggested two concentrations. This was the idea of this at the time was we were going to look at the different dopants, look at the different concentrations, and work out which one gave the best conducting polymer. Now, because they're first year students, it didn't quite work. Um, and I'll go through that in a minute when I show you actually what they were doing, why it didn't work, and how we're going to remedy that. Um, but that was the basic lab. This is a wonderful set of results that Richard over there got. Well, I haven't got an embarrassing picture also, he's, he's there, sitting in the back. Richard's a third year student, did it as a summer project for us. And you'll notice the line's a little bit wobbly. And that's the problem with the lab, as it was with the first years. That it involves taking a piece of that polypyrrole, sticking on a bit of sellotape, and putting it in some hot water, and measuring the resistances, and measuring the temperature simultaneously. The crocodile clips make holes, they punch holes in the polypyrrole. So as the, as the polymer moves, only in the lab we use the stirrer bar, the resistance changes and get fluctuations. So although it was a nice idea, we're going to have to look at how we actually attach that polypyrrole to the, to the, 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 the meter when we actually measure the resistance. But in principle we could see, we could see all the results and the student results. Quite often they'd have a straight line and they'd do something and the line would jump. You could, you could see the slope and they could see it. And it was very interesting, the degree of tolerance the students had to that simple mistake, because they could see that what was going on, they knew what was going on, they could fix it themselves, or they could understand what was going on. And they had no, I never, in my lab, I never had a single complaint about it. They all just got up with it and thought, oh yeah, that's why. You know, it, was, it was a revelation, it was quite often first year students, you get something wrong, they'll let you know about it. Really like it. So, they didn't doubt about it. So that's what they did with it, and this was important. They didn't just make it, they did something with it. That was something they liked. Because they were running it for half an hour, I know this works, Richard. Because they were running it for half an hour, we actually did something else with them as well. This is something, artificial muscles is an area where uh, these conducting polymers are, are, are being looked to be used in research and, and developed. Because it's a little bit tricky, we didn't think, well, if they all do it, it doesn't work, it's going to be a real stuff up. So we'll give them a simple thing. We gave them the thermometer, the plastic thermometer, let them do that. We grew this on the same year that they grew it on, and I think that was important as well. In the lab, at the same time they were growing it, and then we did it as a demonstration. And again, they were remarkably tolerant if it didn't work first time, because they could see the relevance, they could see what we were doing. So what we've got here is we've got two, two, two polypyrrole layers on a piece of double-sided sticky tape, real high tech. Um, and basically you connect one side to a positive, one side to a negative, and you turn the current on. One side oxidizes, one side reduces, and as a, as a part of that product, the dopant molecule moves in and out of the film. And the film might swell or shrink depending on what the current part is. So what happens? You end up with this. Okay, so the, the film eventually, when Richard turned it on, starts to move. So you see this little actuation mechanism, and then when it's gone all the way, I'll just move on a bit. You can reverse the, reverse the electrodes, reverse the wires, and it bends back again. 
Now that isn't fantastic. It's not earth shattering. It's not the sort of thing you'd see in a research lab and go, oh, I've discovered something. But what's really important is they could see we could do that using the same gear that they've done, and it worked. They could then go away, look on the internet or some of these research sites, and they can see some fantastic examples of this sort of stuff. So it gave them an immediacy, it gave them a relevance to what they're doing. Oops. Oh, yeah. The other new lab we brought in was this shift based synthesis. Um, why? Well, they want shift based.